Joe Scarborough is the host, of course, of Morning Joe. He joins me now on the phone. Uh, Joe, you had our inspector on recently on your show. Talk to me about what he said when you were probing him on these issues. Well, we asked him about the Republican Party and how, the, how difficult it was to actually uh, be a Republican in a state like Pennsylvania. And we're talking about how, you know, I get it in 1994, Republicans still had a great showing in states like Pennsylvania, New York, and throughout New England. Uh, but you, you look and see now there's not a single Republican uh, that represents uh, a voter in New England in the House of Representatives. And it, 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 the, the GOP is dying in the Northeast. It is in danger of becoming a regional party, certainly if you look at the past two, three elections. Uh, the only note of caution, though, that uh, I would give is I would remind everybody, and I know, Andre, you remember in 2001, when a certain Republican senator from Vermont switched and became an independent, he caucused with Democrats and actually gave the Democratic Party the majority throughout 2000, through the rest of 2001 and 2002. And, of course... The GOP had a, a big victory in uh, 2002, and he soon found himself uh, in the minority caucusing with Democrats. So you never know how the tables are going to turn. But I think in the short run, this is great news for the Obama White House. Uh, they're not going to have to resort to any legislative tricks to pass health care. Uh, they've got a filibuster-proof majority, most likely. And that means that, that they pass things straight up. And that will certainly, certainly look much better than trying to pass something as big as health care and reconciliation. Uh, let me just define the terms for our viewers, Joe, because you were on a panel last night with Lindsey Graham, the Republican senator, who, uh, and the subject was bipartisanship and how to avoid using that tool of reconciliation, which would uh, permit people to would permit the party to pass things by just 51 votes, not the 60, right. and to get around the rules that had been commonly understood. It's, there are precedents for it, but commonly understood for something as important as health care or the energy bill to use the 60 votes to permit the minority that option. It does really fray the edges of any kind of, of bipartisanship in the Senate. Lindsey Graham has just issued a statement. He was one of your participants last night on your panel. And he said, the situation in Pennsylvania highlights the dilemma facing the Republican Party. Ideologically, we are a center-right party. I am committed to maintaining that position. However, for us to have national relevance, we have to run and win in blue states. As a party, we have to expand our base and diversify our membership while maintaining our fiscally conservative, limited government approach. This is Lindsey Graham, and this is echoing what he said last night and what you know he believes right. in. He then went on to say, today's decision by Senator Specter puts a great deal of pressure on red state Democratic senators. Their constituents will look to them to reject a far left-wing agenda. So this is the attempt also by the Republican Party, we see it in Michael Steele's initial reaction, to paint Specter now as being part of the left-wing agenda. Can they well, win on that? Well, no, you can't win on that. He's a moderate. Uh, he frustrates Democrats as much as he frustrates Republicans. And anybody that knows Arlen Specter knows that Democrats who expect him to toe a party line will be greatly disappointed as well. Uh, there's always grousing about Arlen from both both ends of the, the political spectrum. I, I've got to I've got to disagree a bit with Lindsey Graham, though. The problem's not just ideology with the Republican Party. The the problem is that the Republican Party has become a Southern conservative party. Our leaders have been George W. Bush from Texas, Tom DeLay from Texas, Newt Gingrich from Georgia, Dick Armey from Texas. Uh, we we are a party that talks with a Southern twang. There's uh, good reason why we have been culturally disconnected from New England. Good reason why we've been culturally disconnected from the Pacific Northwest. Good reason why we've been disconnected from California and the Midwest. That's why, you know, we had a guy on this morning, Paul Ryan. He's from Wisconsin. Uh, and uh, Paul is the type of leader that Republicans need. Uh, he's a guy that can be fiscally conservative. That'll fight for the rights of individuals over the expansion of the federal government, but at the same time, do it in a way that may appeal to people in the Midwest a bit more, much like Tim Pawlenty. Uh, but there is no doubt the GOP is in, in grave danger of completely disappearing from the Northeast. Now, I say that in 2009. 
Andrea, again, you know about the back and forths that we see all the time. In 2010, it always changes. Who, it always changes, and who knows? Christopher Dodd in trouble in Connecticut. Rob Simmons could win that race up there or somebody else. You've got in New York State, I mean, my God, David Patterson is wrecking portions of the Democratic Party. You may have a Rudy Giuliani or a George Pataki doing very well in a Senate race there. In Illinois, Rod Blagojevich has caused a lot of problems for Illinois Democrats. There's always an ebb and flow, and when you give one party all the power, there are always certain to be people that make mistakes. There will also be people who will jump ship, and today, of course, Arlen Specter showed that in 2009 he was the guy that jumped from the losing side to the winning side. And again, James Jeffords uh, did the same thing in 2001. Uh, he made Democrats the majority party, and he was kingmaker for a year. Then Republicans took over a year later. It'll be interesting to see what happens next year. All right, Joe Scarborough, uh, extraordinary developments on Capitol Hill. Thank you so much for, for helping us out with it. It is exciting and more excitement to come. We've got Mark Whitaker, Chuck Todd, and the nemesis, the man who was going to prove to be the nemesis, many felt uh, in the Republican Party, Pat Toomey, the congressman who is about to challenge Arlen Specter. So Arlen Specter switched rather than fight. Stay with us. We're while you're watching MSNBC. Certainly today, the place for politics.